I'm Nat. And I'm Lo, and this is our 20% project where we go around Google learning about all the stuff we're curious about. A few years ago, we heard about this crazy idea that Google X wanted to use giant balloons to deliver the internet. Turns out it wasn't such a crazy idea after all because now it's a real project and it's called Loon. We reached out to see if there was any way that we could see what the team is up to these days. And then they basically asked us, hey, would you like to come to our giant hangar and help us pop balloons? So of course we said yes, that sounds awesome. So we went over to Moffett Field and got to hang out in a World War II blimp hangar that's five and a half acres inside. And we played with balloons with Mahesh and Pam and some of the other people on the Loon team. Can you describe what Project Loon is and how it got started? It all started out with uh, Larry and Sergey's vision where they basically wanted to connect the whole world. Right now, more than four billion people can't access the internet, and a lot of them live in rural and remote areas. So it's kind of easier and faster to think of a new solution rather than try to build the same kind of ground infrastructure that other places are using. What if we change the paradigm? People can live anywhere they want, but we take the tower and we actually float it up in the air. Specifically 12 miles up in the stratosphere, twice as high as planes fly, where there are these layers of wind that the balloons can use to sail around on. Side fact, in 1902, a French meteorologist actually discovered that the stratosphere exists because of balloons. This is a loon balloon. It's a pumpkin-shaped, high-altitude, super-pressure balloon, which means a higher pressure inside than the pressure in the ambient outside. What's the, so what's the balloon inside the other balloon? That's a ballonet, which just means little balloon in French. So like in scuba diving, you put on weight to go down and then you let the weight off to go up. This is very similar. The balloons are the size of a tennis court and each kind of bulgy flower petal thing is a different lobe. There's 36 of them and then 36 tendons wrapped around those that help carry load when the balloons are floating in the sky. One of the first big problems in the early days of Loon was leaks. Whoops. <laughs> These balloons are lasting five days, maybe 10 days. So what we did is we formed a leak squad. We all came together to say, what are all the sources of leaks? and then proving out by actually doing testing here at Moffitt and, and other ways. One of these very scientific tests was asking people assembling and walking on top of the balloons to wear a fluffier pair of socks. After six or seven months of testing and refining everything about their process, how they make the balloons, how they package them, how they unpackage them, how they launch them, they were able to take their balloons from lasting five days to... We are able to successfully get our balloons to last more than 100 days. Our longest lasting balloon was 187 days. Which basically means it it went around the world like 10 times. It's like a big noodle. So even though the balloons are lasting longer these days, there's still plenty of things to test. Right now we're doing a bunch of tests to inflate to different pressures. So every 100 pascals, we're taking measurements on the film for strain and stretch. And they do this to purposely pop the balloon so that they can learn more about its strengths and weaknesses. I noticed my hands just barely touching it were like leaving imprints. So was I damaging it? No. So the film can handle a lot if you use all the surface area evenly. But if you say take a finger, you could easily poke through it. It's extremely stretchy at what we call ambient temperature. All these materials are optimized once it's up at float and cold. Because in Moffitt, they're testing at room temperature. But you know, in the sky, it can be like negative 80 degrees at night. There aren't that many places on the ground that we can get something this big that cold. The McKinley Climatic Lab, which is part of the Eggling Air Force Base in Florida. It's a giant hangar, about half the size of uh, Moffett Field, that has unique capabilities of taking it down to minus 40, minus 60 degrees centigrade there. So we've inflated three balloons, and then we took the chamber down, simulated going into, into float. What is the trigger point? Where does it fail? Oh, you see the snow. Whoa! Oh. Oh. Then we go do forensics afterward. So we'll pull the film down. We look at it with a polarized light filter. You can see things with this filter that your naked eye isn't gonna call out to you. And it really helps to look at what shape is it? What direction is it? Does it have any scratches? It's like shining a giant light on it and yeah. instantly everything is clear. For now, Luna's still in its testing phase. A couple years ago, they helped a rural farmer in New Zealand get online. And last year, they brought the internet to a school in a remote area of Brazil. And we just found out that next year, they'll begin testing in Indonesia and maybe a few other places. Our goal is over the next few years to be able to start providing good commercial service. Before making this episode, we used to think that Loon was just like a crazy idea. But 
Now we realize if you look into the history of weather balloons and you know other scientific balloons, not this guy, you realize that they've done some pretty amazing things and they're not newbies to hanging out in the stratosphere. All Loon did was find another way to use them. One day, a balloon is gonna be flying up in the sky and we're not even gonna be able to see it, but someone is gonna be sharing a photo with their friend and it's gonna be because of that balloon we can't even see. Just like anything else, what was once crazy becomes normal. We just wanted to thank you, so we'll, you can just hang tight. Yeah. <laughs> what are you guys doing? Well, we couldn't, you know, provide your balloons, but these balloons, if you map them out, will spell thanks. These are yours. Thank you. <laughs> Learn more about Loon. Follow us. Learn more about Moffat.